Okay, welcome back to part two of the ZV427MG9 DVD capacitor replacement. So as you can see, I've went ahead and ESR'd a bunch of the capacitors, actually all of them, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven capacitors failed the ESR test out of 18. So 11 out of 18 failed the ESR test. So I'm going to go ahead and replace these with standard radial leaded capacitors. I'm not going to use surface mount capacitors. I don't believe in them. I don't think they hold up as well as standard radial leaded capacitors do. So I went ahead and ordered a bunch of different capacitors as close to the same value as possible. I've already made a road map. That way I can strip all the capacitors off without having to worry about where they go. I've marked all of them. Um, I've marked all the negative polarity of the capacitors. So I can just go ahead and strip off all these capacitors in one swoop and go ahead and replace them one by one and not have to worry about did I get the right one in the right place. Okay, so the method that I prefer to use is the twist-off method. I don't like to apply heat and try to lift up both sides of the capacitor. I just don't think it's that effective. And I've had extremely good luck on some pretty delicate circuit boards using the twist-off method. So, let me show you how it goes. So, I'm going to go ahead and start by removing this 330 microfarad capacitor right here. I'm going to grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm going to apply some downward force and I'm just going to rock it back and forth then lift it off the board and then you can see all I have to do is clean the pads off of the circuit board. Remember to apply downward force while twisting. There we go, so I've got all the defective capacitors off of the board. I just need to go ahead and clean up the pads on the board right now. And then I should be ready to add some new capacitors. Now keep in mind, these new capacitors are physically taller. And in some places, I can't just place the capacitor on the board, so I'm going to have to lay it down, uh, particularly in this area right here. Uh, this portion of the board from about here forward is actually covered with the shield. And so this is the height of the circuit board right here and this is the shield. So I don't actually have enough room to stand the capacitors up. So I'm gonna to have to lay those down on their side. But I've done it for years, so let's go ahead and clean off the pads and then we'll add some capacitors. Okay, now hopefully I can get my soldering iron over here without disturbing too much. So to clean the pads off, normally you just add a little bit of solder to it, heat up the pad, then you can just wipe off the offending lead that's on there.
And I've got a whole bunch of leads stuck on the tip right now I need to clean off. Try to be very mindful about neighboring components such as surface mount capacitors like see this little teeny tiny capacitor right there that the solder is touching you don't want to sweep into that I don't mind sweeping in that direction but if you make a mistake that could be disastrous okay I think I've got all the pads off the board at this point I went ahead and put little red marks next to them so I could remember which ones were populated and which ones weren't because as you can see they have unpopulated pads now that I've wiped the solder off of these they look almost identical so it's really hard to make a distinction once you've removed the leads as to which ones were populated and which ones were not. So anyhow, as I specified in another video, um, I did not unplug this ribbon cable right here because this ribbon cable is what actually connects to the optical pickup. It actually connects right down in there, really hard to see, but right here is the laser diode. And then on this side, this is the receiver right here. And I didn't notice any provision for solder pads on this one, so I, I didn't disconnect that ribbon cable. And the reason I did not disconnect the ribbon cable is that this circuit board has basic anti-static properties built into it. It has capacitors and whatnot across the laser diode for the DVD. And I just don't want to introduce any stray ESD charges, so I always try to leave this connected anytime I'm doing work on this board only uh, disconnected under extreme circumstances. All right, so now that we've got the parts off the board, we're ready to add some new ones to it. Okay, so I went ahead and made a couple of additional marks right here and right here. And what that tells me is anything past this point going backwards, I have a lot of clearance. I can stand all of these capacitors up. This one, this one, that one, and those two. I can stand those up no problem. Now up here, I think the capacitors I've chosen are about 18 millimeters tall, and I've only got about 14 or 15 millimeters of clearance. So these are all going to have to be laid down. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna be the 47 at 16. It's the one oddball capacitor. I'm going to heat up that side and then push down on this side, reheat up that side to remove any stress from the capacitor. So it's going to be basically motionless on the board now, stress free. Next, I just want to add a good amount of solder to it just to make sure that it has some kind of mechanical integrity there too. Next, we're going to get a 330 microfarad capacitor right here. All right, well, there's the first two. Well, all right, there it is. All the caps have been replaced that I ESR'd as being defective. Uh, the rest of the caps actually checked really good, so I didn't want to go ahead and replace those and add an extra cost to the customer. I just went ahead and changed the defective caps. So let's go ahead and get this baby buttoned back up. We'll get some power on it. I'll get a rewritable DVD. And we'll see if we can actually burn a DVD with this thing. Hopefully, yes. Okay, so I've got a blank DVD-R. Pop it in the unit. It knows it's a minus R DVD. And so I have it set for one hour. So I'm going to go ahead and dub some VHS tape over to it in the one hour speed. Let's check out some of the other menus on this unit. General settings. So I have auto chapter set for five minutes. 
Auto finalize is disc full. Dubbing mode VCR to DVD. And make recording compatible? Yes. I have no idea what that means, but yes. Alright, so I'm going to hit the dubbing button and we'll let this thing run its course. So we'll let this baby record. Hopefully it'll finalize. Everything will work good. We'll come back to it after an hour. Alright, so I have successfully recorded one hour on the DVD-R. So let's go ahead. I've ejected the disc. I'm going to go ahead and close it now. It's going to load. Let's hit play. Skip ahead just a little bit. There it is, it's working. This is a dub from a VHS over onto the DVD. It's working absolutely perfect. So once again at this point, I want to give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead, leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.